a famished polar bear scavenging for scraps at a local trash site. Children choking on smog on their way to school. A baby sea turtle already dead from the plastic congestion. Oh, we know the world is on fire. We know the ice caps are melting. We know up to one million animal species will become extinct. And we know if we do not change the world to a zero carbon emission system, then droughts, floods, and wildfires will regularly ravage the land. We know. But what can we do about it? Please join me and let's just take a moment to breathe. Breathe in and breathe out. Take a deep breath in. Really feel the rush of air into your lungs. And consider, 70% of the Earth's oxygen actually comes from algae. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am not here to tell you to invest in a boat before Pretoria becomes a coastal city. No. I am here so that we may talk about algal alternatives. Okay, so besides that green stuff in your pool, what are algae? Algae are photosynthetic, predominantly aquatic organisms. They may convert the sun's energy into biomass far better than plant plants do. Thus, a microalgae is just the minuscule version of these. And thus, they have the potential to transform what we currently consider liabilities into valuable assets. Just growing algae captures carbon from the atmosphere, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. It may recycle nutrients and remove heavy metals, thus treating wastewater. It uses far less water than what land plants do and can operate on barren land unfit for agriculture. So growing algae is very simple. All we really require is carbon dioxide, sunlight, water, and a little bit of nutrients. And what we get on the other side, this algal biomass has huge commercial potential for almost any product that you can imagine. From biofuels to bioplastics, human and animal nutrition, beauty care products, pharmaceuticals, and high-value added products, such as omega oils. So we know that fossil fuels are one of the biggest contributors to global warming, and we need to reduce our consumption. But luckily, research is being done right around the world to provide bioremediable fuels from algae. Different fuels can be made depending on the part of the cell used, and the type of extraction. So if we use the oily part, it can be extracted to form biodiesel, or the carbohydrate content can be fermented into bioethanol. And hopefully, in the future, we will transition our energy use. Our homes and our cars will be run with algae. Now I'm going to ask you, what do you think is another significant polluter. Anybody? I hear a little bit of murmurings. I see a lot of it all around the room, yes. Methane, okay, that is definitely, but there's something that I'm seeing all around the room right now. Yes, well done my man, thank you. <laughs> so, and plastics is another significant polluter. As much as 13 million tons of plastic enter the ocean every single year. That is approximately three times the weight of the entire South African population. And what's staggering is that half of these are single-use plastics. Look around the room again. That plastic bottle. I think I saw a chocolate wrapper there somewhere. 
are you going to use it again? Not really, right? And even if they break down into tiny microparticles, they may still take up to a thousand years to decompose, which is far longer than we expect to live. So the plastic's permanence is mainly due to an unsustainable material that it's made out of, petroleum. But instead of manufacturing synthetic plastics, we could turn to a cheaper, greener alternative. Can anyone guess what I'm going to say? Algae. Algae, as a base material for biopolymers, could provide a plastic that is sustainable, strong, and set to decompose depending on thickness and design. An excellent alternative for single-use plastics. This year already, the London 2019 Marathon, in which 41,000 people participated, utilized water in edible algae pods. Edible, did I, did I say edible? Why yes. The concept of eating algae is not new. It's been part of the human diet for centuries. Microalgae can be eaten as a standalone food product, or it can be processed into current foods, such as flour, milk, vegan eggs, and protein powders, with a, like a range of health and medical benefits. Most microalgae have a complete essential amino acids profile and are excellent sources of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and chlorophyll. Sporting a far healthier and cheaper food alternative for humans, animals, and the environment. I challenge you, next time you're walking through the supermarket, look for anything labeled chlorella. It's difficult to believe that these few pills are packed with more protein per gram than a steak. What's not difficult to believe, however, is that algae is currently a $14 billion market. But why then is it not handled in climate change? While a team of scientists at the University of California state that there is currently an inverse relationship between the volume of algal product produced and the profit that product can generate. So the larger the, larger the volume, the lower the profit. We all dread our gas tanks hitting empty and filling up with 17 rand a litre. But this actually falls into the vo low volume, high volume, low profit margin and explains why biofuels are currently just not cost effective. And therefore, I suggest we should focus our attention on the other end of the algae spectrum, on the very low volume but high profit products, such as therapeutic recombinant proteins which can sell for millions of dollars per kilogram. Now, recombinant proteins can include antibodies, hormones, enzymes. They may be used in the food, agricultural, and bioengineering industries. And they can also be used as therapies as diseases against anemia, diabetes, and cancer. We all know a recombinant protein or a protein insulin, right? We know insulin. Commercial insulin used to be produced from animals. So we'd raise the animals, we'd slaughter them, we'd harvest their pancreas, and then we'd isolate 80 bits of insulin protein. But with recombinant biotechnology, we can take the DNA encoding insulin and insert that into a cellular factory, such as microalgae. And we know microalgae requiring only sunlight and water will grow 
and produce your protein for you. What is more, microalgae's generally regarded as safe status makes them suitable for the large-scale production of oral vaccines, which could provide an accessible, inexpensive solution to many third-world diseases, such as malaria. Now, this is of special interest to South Africa's agriculture industry, which has been struggling to overcome disease. An entire industry where genetically modified microalgae could act as an environmentally sustainable solution. With recombinant proteins as the highest value algal product attained, investment would allow feedback to other algal products. But three years ago, South Africa had no microalgal protein production systems. So for my masters, I decided to experiment and research the potential of this technology in our laboratories. And you know what I found? In well-established microalgal countries, such as Czech Republic, Israel, and the United States, their production yields would drop due to insufficient light or extreme temperatures. But our country, with our light intensity, constant daylight periods, and warm weather, we have the perfect climatic conditions for growing microalgae. Beautiful South Africa. We need to join the world leaders in conversation and innovate microalgae products for our people and the entire planet. A few weeks ago, I went for surgery. And as I was starting to recover from the anesthesia, the nurse held a glass of water for me to drink with a little plastic straw in it. Now, I felt so guilty. In my drug-induced state, I held onto that little straw to use for the rest of my beverages. Now, what if that had such a strong reaction in me when surgery itself had a greater carbon footprint? It made a lasting impression because we spoke about it on media platforms. We became aware of the problem, and because we created such a stir, the market was forced to come up with alternatives. My point is, solutions are possible, but it is up to us. We should not be limited by our status as a developing country. Rwanda, a pioneer in banning single-use plastics, is now one of the cleanest nations on earth. In a capitalistic society, our everyday decisions matter. And we all hold the key to a greener future. So, it is essential that we start demanding microalgal products as solutions to society's largest challenges of resource depletion, food, fuel, and water security, as well as climate change. The long-term reward will be invaluable to our society and the global community at large. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and attention. My name is Yolani Stolperberg, and I'm very excited to build a greener future together. Thank you.